when I got converted to the Christian faith, I did not have the benefit of having a more mature believer guide me in my own Christian life. Now, I knew the gospel, but that was it. There was a craving for more, but sadly, no one was there to help me learn the basics of the faith. I suppose that there are many believers in the same situation. And this is, there is an urgent need for more mature believers to take the initiative and care for younger Christians, weaker Christians, more fragile disciples of Jesus Christ. Today, I'd like us to deal with the subject of spiritual parenting, a subject matter that the Lord has been laying upon my heart for the last few days. And my text is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 6 to 12. Allow me to read that to you. You may follow along as I read this to you aloud. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6 to 12. As apostles of Christ, we could have been a burden to you, but we were gentle among you like a mother caring for her little children. We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you had become so dear to us. Surely you remember, brothers, our toil and hardship. We worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preached the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. We see here in our text uh, that the Apostle Paul was a parent to young Christians. He purposefully and passionately helped develop the spiritual lives of those who professed faith in Jesus Christ. Now, uh, this passion proceeded from his commitment to fulfill the mandate of the Lord Jesus Christ as found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 to 20. Uh, this is often titled as the Great Commission. Allow me to read that to you and let us revisit uh, this very important mandate of the Lord Jesus Christ. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. This is the command of the Lord Jesus Christ that He had given to all of His disciples. This command is for everyone, without exception, regardless of the situation. It does not make any distinction. Uh, this is a command for us to proclaim the gospel uh, that would convert people to faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, this is also a command for us to nurture those people who profess faith and, uh, and build them up and train them to minister and multiply. Again, we have to understand that this command to make disciples is a command given to all believers. Paul describes his disciple-making ministry in parenting terms. 
In fact, I do believe that this beautifully illustrates for us what making disciples is all about. It's about parenting. It's about being a mother and a father to younger believers in the faith. Let's see how the Apostle Paul describes his disciple-making ministry. First thing that we see here is that the Apostle Paul uh, demonstrated motherly love to his disciples. Paul demonstrated motherly love to his disciples. He begins by telling us the attitude, the mindset that dominated him. Paul maintained an other's first mindset, which is so important in making disciples, isn't it? Uh, without this mindset, if we were to be consumed with ourselves, thinking always of our wants, our needs, what we think we deserve in life, then we would not be used by God to minister to other people. In describing his manner of ministry to the believers in Thessalonica, the Apostle Paul reveals to us the mindset that dominated him. Paul was dominated by an other's first attitude. He wasn't thinking, he wasn't preoccupied with his own self with his condition, his situation, but he was always thinking of how he may be a blessing to others. He was always taking into consideration the situation of others. When we answer the call of God to minister to others, to nurture, to disciple others, that attitude ought to dominate our thinking. We always have to think of what can I do and what do I have that I can give in order to build that person in the faith. Let me read to you verses 6 and 7 once again. As apostles of Christ, we could have been a burden to you, but we were gentle among you like a mother caring for her little children. As uh, uh, what the Apostle Paul said, his ministry was a gentle ministry. I love that word. It means power under control. Uh, you can exert the full force of your power, but you don't. Uh, why? Because you take into consideration the situation of the other party. And you simply apply enough power, power that is necessary. Uh, let me give you an illustration for this. For instance, if you hand me a newborn baby, now I have the power uh, to crush that baby. I can apply the full force of my power on that baby. But certainly, I would not. You know why? Because I'm supposed to take into consideration the situation, the fragile nature, the fragileness of that baby. And I would apply just enough power. I would be tender. That's what gentleness is all about. Now, let's connect this with what the Apostle Paul said in verse 6. As apostles of Christ, we could have been a burden to you. What's he talking about here? The Apostle Paul was talking about his rights as an apostle, his rights as a teacher of God's Word. Certainly, as a, as a teacher of God's Word, he had every right to earn from the ministry. He could have insisted 
on that right. Uh, certainly, this is not evil. Uh, uh, the Bible talks about that. The Bible talks about people being, uh, being in support. Uh, uh, they have to share with those who minister to them spiritually. But the Apostle Paul saw the situation of these young believers. Uh, they were being persecuted opposed because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And as a result, they were impoverished. They were suffering. And taking into consideration that situation, the Apostle Paul did not insist on his rights. I, I, I love how the Apostle Paul began uh, uh, his, uh, his, to describe his manner of ministry because he begins with the necessary attitude that ought to dominate the minds of disciple makers, of spiritual parents. We always have to think of the other person's situation. And isn't a mother uh, uh, a most wonderful example of one who thinks about the other? We are dominated by a me-first attitude, right? Our generation, our society is dominated by a selfish attitude. And sometimes that selfishness can also enter into the lives of Christians. And so when we come to church, we always think about us. We always think about, hey, what would benefit me? Huh? Uh, uh, what blessing can I derive from this? Rather than entering, entering the, uh, the Christian assembly and asking ourselves, hey, who has a need? How may I contribute to the growth, to the spiritual development of others? This is the starting point. Another thing to consider is that this attitude was the attitude of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, Philippians chapter 2 uh, 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 talks about that, beautifully describes the humility and the other's first mindset of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says there that He was God. He was in very nature God, but He did not grasp. He did not hold on to that, uh, the, the, his, his divine rights. But seeing our needs, seeing that we needed salvation, He ministered to us. And I love what it says in that passage. He says there, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. That question that ought to uh, 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 hound our minds is, what do I have? And what can I do that would draw others closer to Jesus Christ? In connection with that, and because of such an attitude that dominated the mind of the Apostle Paul, Paul gave everything that was necessary to develop disciples spiritually. In demonstrating motherly love, Paul gave everything that was necessary to help develop disciples spiritually. He says in verse 8, We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God. Now, stop there. His was a giving ministry. He was consumed with passion for the development of other believers that he was asking himself, what do I have that would benefit them spiritually and grow them in their Christian lives? Well, the primary instrument 
that, uh, that the Lord has given us to grow, to mature Christians in the faith, is that of the Word of God. And the Apostle Paul made sure that he gave them the Word of God. Uh, that's what love is, isn't it? Love is giving. Love is charity. We think about how may I benefit others rather than thinking of what can I get in return. He gave the Word of God. And the Bible talks about the benefit, uh, the effects of being immersed in the Word of God. We grow. We mature, our character develops, and we become more and more like Jesus Christ. But don't stop there. The Apostle Paul did not just give the word, but notice, he also gave his life as well. Huh? We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you had become dear to us. What does that mean? It means anything and everything. Whatever was necessary to help develop believers, he was willing to. To give that. Uh, for some of us, it would mean our time, uh, our resources. Uh, certainly, in leading people to salvation, that is evangelism, and in leading young Christians to faith, that would take a lot of time. Uh, that would be a lot of hassle. Uh, it would be time-consuming, energy-consuming, uh, uh, fund-consuming. But we should not be so preoccupied with the burden, but rather knowing that these would contribute to the upliftment, to the development of others, we must be willing to give. That's what disciple-making is. Uh, I was blessed later on in life. I mentioned about my uh, conversion. Uh, but during my uh, later, later uh, years, you know, uh, uh, about uh, uh, many years after I got converted, someone was used by the Lord to help me in my own Christian, uh, Christian growth. He was instrumental in, uh, in developing my character. He was instrumental in equipping me for effective ministry. He told me about the importance of obeying the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ and being used to develop other people, to minister to other people. Boy, I really grew in my spiritual life as a result of this minis the ministry of this young man. He helped me grow in my own Christian life. He was a parent to me. Think about this. In our churches, who among our people need parenting? Are there Christians? Huh? Uh, are there young Christians, perhaps fragile Christians, who need our assistance? Are we taking the initiative to help them grow in their faith? Uh, not only was the Apostle Paul's ministry a giving ministry, but notice also it was a sacrificial ministry. He went, he went the extra mile uh, in, order, in order to help these believers grow in their faith. In demonstrating motherly love, the Apostle Paul sacrificed his rights so as not to be a burden to his disciples. Let me read that to you. Verse 9. Surely, 
you remember, brothers, our toil and hardship. We work night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel of God to you. We already gave insight to what was going on. Uh, the Apostle Paul took into consideration the the pitiful situation of these young believers in the city of Thessalonica. As I've mentioned, they were poor folks. And they became poor because of the oppression and the persecution uh, uh, of, uh, of the enemies of the cross towards them. And uh, taking into consideration that situation, the Apostle Paul waived his rights as a teacher, as an apostle of Jesus Christ. He waived his right of earning a living, earning money from the ministry. And so you know what he did? He had a skill. He had a trade skill. He did tent making on the side. Now, this was on top of his ministry activities. He was already full-time uh, in, in ministry, spending much of his day ministering to people. And on the side, he had to work in order to fend for his needs. That was sacrifice. And that's what he meant when he said he worked night and day in order not to be a burden to others. Again, what is quite sad is that if we sometimes uh, meet an, an obstacle or a hindrance in our ministry, we easily give up. Many of us easily give up. Or we find ourselves complaining, murmuring, you know, whenever there are issues or problems that come along the way. We ought to be dominated by an other's first mindset. And this would lead us to make sacrifices, to be willing to make sacrifices. Let me bring you to another passage of Scripture that describes the, uh, the heart of the Apostle Paul, this time towards the believers in Corinth. He says in chapter 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 15, So I will very gladly spend for you everything I have and expend myself as well. If I love you more, will you love me less? Ah, very emotional, isn't it? He was telling these, uh, these disciples that he was willing to give up anything and everything that was necessary in order to minister to them. I will very gladly spend and expend of myself. Are we? Certainly, the Apostle Paul's manner of ministry, his other's first mindset, ought to be emulated by us. The second part of this passage of Scripture deals with uh, the fatherly love demonstrated by the Apostle Paul. Paul demonstrated fatherly love to his disciples. Paul, for instance, provided a pattern for Christian living to his disciples. Uh, that is found in verse 10. Notice what the Apostle Paul writes. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believe. Now, don't misunderstand uh, the, the words of the Apostle Paul. When he says holy, righteous, and blameless, he's not talking about perfection. He's not saying, well, you have to be 
perfect, you have to be perfectly righteous in your living before you can disciple others. Certainly not, you know. Uh, uh, what is necessary is that we ought to be careful, or I should use the term responsible in the way we live our lives, knowing full well that the disciples whom we are ministering are looking at us. In other words, we teach disciples, we communicate the principles uh, to these disciples found in Scripture, not only verbally, but we do so visually, don't we? We teach not only through our words, but most especially through our example. And you know what? If the mindset that dominates us is me, me first, uh, I don't care, I don't care uh, uh, how others look at me or how others consider me, I don't care, you know, what other people say about how I live my life. Well, this leads us to careless, irresponsible living, right? We become stumbling blocks to others, preventing others from drawing near to Christ because of our bad example. Fathers ought to be good examples to their children. Amen? Uh, I, I find myself, I find myself uh, as a dad uh, uh, becoming more careful in how I live my life. I do recall a time when uh, 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 I was walking my son in the park. Oh, this was uh, the time when he was small. My son is all grown up now and he has a family of his own. But I do recall that time when he was small. And while we were walking, uh, somehow, I, uh, I lost sight of him and I was looking for him and lo and behold, he was at my back. He was behind me, literally following my footsteps. <laughs> he, was, he was putting his feet on those steps that I would take. In other words, he was imitating me. He was copying me. Now, during that time, that was really scary. I thought to myself, I was reproducing myself in this little guy. That's how fathers, you know, that's how fathers ought to think. Uh, through my example, I am reproducing myself. And as a good father, the Apostle Paul was careful, was responsible in the way he lived his life so that nothing in his life may prevent people from, uh, from drawing near to Jesus Christ. Nothing would be a stumbling block for others to come to faith. He was, as a father, he demonstrated fatherly love by setting a good example to those who follow him. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 uh, could be a summary of the disciple-making ministry of the Apostle Paul. He says there, imitate me as I imitate Jesus Christ. That's careful living, isn't it? In another uh, version, it says there, follow me as I follow Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul was responsible in the way he conducted himself. He also told his uh, younger disciple, Timothy, uh, to set himself as an example in speech, in love, in power, in humility. 
Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, he calls the believers in Philippi, listen to this, Join with others in following my example, brothers. But not only him, take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. So, I am sure, I am certain that there are people within your church who are worthy of emulation. Not perfect people, uh, but they live careful, responsible Christian lives and they set themselves uh, uh, as examples, godly examples for younger believers to follow. Also, he demonstrated fatherly love by motivating his disciples to live according to God's standard. Paul motivated his disciples to live according to God's standard. It says in verse 11, For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into His kingdom and glory. Oh, the Apostle Paul used his words in order to bring comfort to others. He used his lips in order to inspire, to motivate other believers to achieve their full potential in Jesus Christ. We have a powerful tool, don't we? Our tongues, our mouth. And we ought to use this in order to fan the flames, you know, to inspire others in the faith. He says they're encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God. Without the prodding, the encouragement, and the comforting words of those people whom God had led into my life, they certainly spoke His words into my heart, I wouldn't be what I am right now. I look back and I thank the Lord for how He has used these more mature believers to develop me and to inspire me to be all that I can be for the glory and honor of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul demonstrated motherly love. Others' first mindset. The Apostle Paul demonstrated fatherly, fatherly love. And uh, he lived a careful and responsible life and he inspired younger believers to achieve their full potential in the Lord. A number of reflections as we close. The first one, there are people in our church who are in need of spiritual guidance. We ought to open our eyes to the needs that are being presented to us. Shall we? Take the initiative and help them in their own spiritual journey. Secondly, Paul's manner of ministry is certainly worthy of emulation. How are we measuring up? Are we following the godly example of the Apostle Paul, who was passionate, about making disciples of other people. And lastly, knowing the difficulties that accompany ministry should make us appreciative of those who nurture us. Uh, be reminded of those who in the past have built us up to where we are, and even those in the present who are currently nurturing us feeding us, making sacrifices so that we would be built up in the faith.
and thank God, praise God for the lives and commitment of these people. May God bless you. And may we be committed to fulfilling the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ.